Hello, hello, and welcome. Yay, it's showing Ward live. Fourth, you're first in the chat. Hello, Phantom! The long shot that is real! <laughs> Good to see all of you. You are real good, glad to hear it. So we have a quick stream tonight. We're going to talk about the game room. We're going to talk about all kinds of tech stuff. And we're going to get the down low from Varsevere's Adventuring Academy, um, also known as Gimbal, known as Rory, uh, who has been missing for weeks and is now missing pieces. Uh, and we'll see yeah. how he's feeling tonight. So um, should be a, a fun night tonight. Hello, Mystical Unicorn! Rob, Phantom, good to see you. As always, thank you to our sponsors, Mantic Games, Federica Draws, the uh, great folks that are helping us with all the things we do here at Blue Box. And then uh, we have our two main uh, newer sponsors and older sponsors, DCG. And we are having some sort of audio issue here. Hang on. Fun times. Of course. It's that tiny goblin horde, I tell ya. <laughs> They're always a problem. Oftentimes. Alright, so... <laughs> Gremlins. Penhead yes, said the music was <laughs> bad. I'm, I'm guessing you heard the nasty feedback sound, <laughs> not actual music. <laughs> hey, Triple Eight. Mousetrap, honeybee. Yeah. Oh, Mike Disney, welcome. Good to have you with us tonight. Hopefully, we'll get this all figured out. A bit of both. Oh, they heard the music. Apparently it played on the stream, just not... Well, just not here. Okay. Not there. Alright, I'm gonna switch these. Hang on, this might be bad for a second. <laughs> back where they were. Everybody prepare your ears, just in case. You'll probably just hear clicking. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> Alright, and... Yeah, you guys heard it there. That's... Okay, well... Why did we not? Um, <laughs> That's right, Phantom. It has. It's just gone on hiatus. Golly! <laughs> wow! That's like a robotic alien just now. Right? Yeah, we're about to go deaf here. Um, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Some somewhere. Let's see. Oh gosh. I know. Sorry. You're okay. 
Sounds like they don't hear him, just us. No, I know. We're the only ones suffering. I don't know what's going on. No distortion. Well, I'm glad that you guys are, are fine. <laughs> oh, you heard that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> that's what we're hearing. Um, I, I, this has never happened before. I don't know what this is. So ironic. On a night, I'm going to show the, the game room and the tech. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. And it doesn't want to work. Thank you, thank you. Um, it's quite exciting. New sound effects, indeed. It's not my fault. <laughs> Unbelievable. I was here and prepared. All right. It's always the goblin. Abyssal beings. That's right, Penhead. Abyssal beings surround us. Trying to place what song that is. It sounds like they're getting some rock. <laughs> The yeah, Mad Hendrix Hatters. is a good ex description of it. The Mad Chatters are on top of it tonight. Playing uh, always on top of playing, it. Uh, it did sound like Hendrix, Tim. National anthem. <laughs> yes. Only much more sinister. More sinister than our normal quests? Yeah, very wow, that's much really more bad. <laughs> it's the sinisterest. Um, all mm. right, and let's try this again. Hang Fingers on. crossed. <laughs> yes make it extra spooky all right so i'm guessing they're hearing you and i fine yeah i mean they seem to be is anyone all right well me? let's try this because i can barely hear you in in the room here but hmm. um are you hearing the music here let me kick this off again i can hear the music there yeah I can I can hear the the stream music. I just didn't hear the uh, DCG commercial music. You heard a ding. All right. <laughs> well, it sounds good to all of you. So I'll just have to suffer because I hear barely anything on my end. I'll have to figure that out later. And I'm gonna go ahead and flex on all my great technology tonight. So <laughs> thank you so much. When it normally. Uh, all right. Oh, Phantom. Mm, I don't know think that you I meant that that way. That. That's fine. <laughs> oh. All right. And we're going to switch live. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, you are joined tonight by uh, John, DM Neuromancer, and also Evelyn, uh, who plays Irda, Lilith, Millie, Millith. No, I, 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 I put it all together. Um, I am one. We yeah, are well, all one in the same. I also plays Marathaliel on our occasional Saturday campaign. And then we're joined tonight by Rory. Uh, Rory, who is, of course, Gimbal, but is also uh, Varsavir Adventure Academy and two Dungeon Masters. And Rory, we've missed you, my friend. What's it been like? Let's start off there tonight. What's it been like having to watch the last couple of weeks? while you've been out both with Gimbal who is uh, captured and held back and then also you are of course with your son and his games well I mean the games is good you know so it's it's good to you know it's great to be able to support him and, and have you guys support me in that process so that's nice aside from that <laughs> it's agonizing and torturous uh to be to like it's felt like it's been seven weeks 
yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. It's like I got yeah. in the routine, you know, it was every Tuesday. This was the weekly ritual. And then there was this the flow starting with the group. And then it's just like I don't have my fix. <laughs> I'm craving. <laughs> and so you know, there's always that worry too, no matter uh, Maybe not, but for me, uh, no matter who that DM is, like my character is out of my control now. So there's a little bit of what's going to happen and how is it going to play out. So it's it's a gamble. It's a gamble for gimbal. Gimbal gamble. Yeah, it's a gimbal gamble. gamble. And and look, and it's, it's especially tough because like pieces of you are coming in the campaign. Yeah. I felt bad when we had the ear, uh, but then of course last night. There's a pinky. So what's it been like? Because you and I have not talked about that. What's that like for you to see pieces of your character showing up? Well, he won't be able to itch his ear anymore. <laughs> uh, you know, no, I mean, so I've also been a DM, right? So it, it's in my head goes how it two things roll through my head and one is how is gimbal going to react one is how do i play gimbal and the other is okay well i get this like i get that he's in the situation he's in i also get why we did this you know so on a dm level i have no issue with it on a player level it's just okay how am i going to resolve this so you're not mad at me <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what else he takes, I suppose. Well, I mean, I mean, it's kind of like it's kind of like sure when losing an eye, right? These yeah. things happen, and you can you can kind of have in a in a, in a, in a I don't know in a weird way of saying you can have fun with it, right? You can utilize the handicap right. to embrace whether you want to take it down the role play aspect and embrace what is it like to not have that digit anymore. Uh, what is it like to walk into society, especially amid a renaissance type society and be missing something like that um or just hey what is a spell gonna look like now all your somatic gestures will have to be altered it'll be fun mm -hmm. yeah all right so uh wait for next body part uh we'll see and I don't yeah want i think any more will body be parts. Mad. i've been getting all of the body parts <laughs> <laughs> um has anyone asked gimbal to point something out lately that was a question from lord fourth Wrong finger. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually. Hey, Mark views. All right, so uh, tonight, <laughs> want to show a little bit of the room, and my audio is still messed up here, but I'm gonna trust you guys are hearing me okay. Yep. And uh, we're going to switch on this cam, and you're looking at a floor. Uh, you're looking at a floor <laughs> because it is the floor where the party encountered Burn. Uh, so you can see Burn here. Uh, I'm gonna show the room and all of its glory and fault as mm. well. So, this is the game table and I'm gonna rely on Evelyn uh, yeah. to watch the chat because I won't be able to watch the chat. Yep, I'll, I got a chat. Great, so as questions pop up, I really wanna help answer questions. So. The game room I have here is pretty, um, pretty modest. It's about 12 by 12, so it's not very big. Um, and I'll give you kind of the quick circle around. But what I will tell you first of all is it is hidden in a very secret area. Um, I do have a wireless mic, which is part of the tech. So there is the secret door. You can't see that door from outside this room because it's hidden. I don't know if you can see that there behind another door. So what better way to have your game room than hidden behind a secret door? Uh, then within the room, I'm gonna go from left to right. Uh, so I've got uh, these sort of lantern style lights here. And one of my all time favorite pieces of artwork. This Lord of the Rings poster has always fascinated me. It's nailed to a piece of wood with these sort of rusty iron spikes. And those lights, by the way, like all the lights in the room, they are Philips Hue lights. So you'll see me use those here in a second. Uh, you can dim them. 
and change colors as you've seen me do on stream. Uh, everything in the room is wood or faux wood. And then we start with all the goodies here. And I'm going to pause. Any questions so far, Evelyn, or snarky nope, comments? They're or? just kind of ooing and eyeing over the game oh, room. Okay, all right, thank you. Yes. All right, so uh, here you have one of the newest shelves I've added. Um, we have some of the minis here. Uh, this guy, uh, if you've watched our Saturday uh, Fourth Age campaign, you know what that is. He's a monstrous a Draco dragon. Lich. And Caligon, and then uh, the first bit of our terrain. So I've got snow terrain here. You've been seeing this on some of our Sunday streams. Roads and rivers, these were all made, uh, handmade here. And then of course the ship. This is from Tabletop Crafters. Uh, and this is the ship of Captain Cade Cardinal. Uh, there is a, a mast uh, here. Pull that out, it's gonna fight me. Hang on. It's a great view of my floor, you enjoying that? Got a mask <laughs> here uh, with it, and then there is a sail that goes with it. And that sail says, a Mako's Revenge. Then I have docks and all kinds of other elements of the shipyard stuff here. Now going down, one of my most important pieces lots of black construction paper. Yep. So I use this to cover uh, terrains and settings. You might have even noticed here, if you look at this setting with burn last night, I didn't want my keyboard showing behind the terrain. So I put up black construction paper behind it. So when you're looking at it here, you're just seeing that nice black background. So I use this stuff quite a bit. Uh, then I have bins here where I hold, so if you watched a, a couple of weeks ago, all the sewer terrain that was used for Lost Dog. So the whole stream with Carlos Lysings, that's all the sewer material. Then you have behind there, oh, that's heavy. You have battle mats. So this mat here on the table goes back here behind that area. And then you have this. Evelyn, you know what this is. Oh yes, I do. That is your DM screen that was made by Dungeon Crafting. So, Dragon Crafting Dragon Guild, Guild made a custom... DCG made that for you. Beautiful. Uh, I use that quite a bit. Paint. Uh, my paints are not, you know, better than many of you. We got Mike Disney on, others that would make my paints look pitiful, uh, but I got some there. My microphones, I'll talk about microphones in a minute, yes. uh, because I use a special set of mics here, uh, but you can see the mics. These are all of the accoutrement um. of Captain Cade Cardinal, so her dice tray, her mic, her uh, dice set, her <laughs> character sheet. Mystical Unicorn Painting is judging your paint storage, John. <laughs> I know they are they are so judgmental. <laughs> um, so we'll stop there and I'm gonna come back and show uh, the rest of the room in a second. Let's know where you keep your notebooks of your DM ideas. All right. I'm sorry, so repeat that. Uh, Tim wants to know where you keep your notebooks of your DM ideas. Oh, okay, so um, my primary book is this gigantic piece of graph paper book here. I have page after page after page of notes and ideas uh, that go into this graph paper book. But I also use Trello. So if you have never used Trello, it's a great way to drop cards in. So even last night, I had some descriptions and things for the game. I popped those in Trello. Mm -hmm. Very, very easy to store slide cards around and work with. So let me pull that up here while I'm doing that. Any other comments or questions, Evelyn? I do not see any other questions oh. yet. Okay. So let me pull that up. What is this doing? Trello. 
Yes. Greyhawk Awakening. And of course, even Trello is fighting me tonight. Of That's course it is. Crazy. I'd never have a problem with Trello. There we go. Got it. All right, so I'm going to pop this up here and I'm going to share my screen. <laughs> and hold on. So this wasn't quite asked, John. It was mentioned that, uh, I forget who said it, but they keep a lot of the homebrew in their head. How much do you depend on your tech for your notes or your notebooks for your notes or how much do you memorize? Yeah, okay, that's a great question. I want to answer that. So I don't I don't use a lot of the tech for notes. Occasionally I might have some descriptions I want to be a little more detailed with that I'll pop up. But the reality is most of the time it's off the cuff. Mm -hmm. I know what I want to do, I know what the game is gonna be, and so I rely on that sort of stream of consciousness in the moment uh, is how I do most of my descriptions. Now, Rory, uh, I know you DM as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know you do Evelyn, uh, not just... I have one game so far. The, the honey heist, <laughs> and it was uh, great. Got, so how do you guys handle that? Um, I had a combination of places where my notes were. I had written notes and I had some, some notes on my tablet where I was doing most of my description stuff from. Um, but it was a combination of things, but because it was entirely digital, I kind of had to handle it in that sort of format, so. Rory? I have learned for me, uh, an outline. So, because I've created the, I've created a few one-shots. So in the creation process, I used to be really detailed. I learned how to just bullet point it, or maybe a little bit more than bullet point it, and then I can just stay on script that way. and easily adapt to whatever the players do and not get bogged down in excessive details. No, I agree with that. So I think where I really want to be descriptive, I might uh, write something out mm -hmm. for, for example, last week I had, I didn't even use it. I was, it was so stupid. I had it all written out. When you guys started off in, in the tower with burn, mm -hmm. I had like three paragraphs written out to describe it and I forgot them. I never used them. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> that tells you how much I use my scripting. Uh, but I do I like the idea of, of having an outline mm -hmm. and major themes. And so you can guide the players uh, and as they go, you can jump around in those things and move the parts and pieces around as a D DM to make it more uh, easy for you to work with. Right, yeah. And we see if you depend too much on tech, and it all falls apart. <laughs> all right, and Asher the Bear says, you print stuff, you've typed and scribble over it. I do the same thing. Uh, if you've seen my crit tables or like, yeah. I've got all kinds of pages like this, uh, just scribbled over prints and they mean things to me. So I use a lot of that. All right. Let's see. Let's go back and look at more of the room. Okay, so let's go now to the opposite side. And you have here, of course, uh, some custom artwork. This was a gift from one of my players. Yes. Shout out Steve McKissick, thank you so much. Yep. The, uh, and then- Formerly known as are for th those folks of you who were in the early part of our uh, <laughs> Greyhawk campaign. Exactly. Uh, you have the amazing map of Anna B. Meyer. And then coming over here, and let me try not to block the cam, cam too much, uh, we have the first of my shelves. So on these shelves, you'll see everything from the mini from Atris, uh, which I have, that's the red dragon. I've got books. Uh, this is from Bill, or George, I'm sorry, George Pationi. Um, so we get all kinds of cool terrain gifts. All my old school books uh, up there and many more. There's like stacks and stacks of them behind there. Then you have additional terrain, uh, all the sort of forest-like terrain. Uh, my growing stack of dragon magazines. And then some of my books in boxes. So you see there, Greyhawk, basic D&D &D oh. from the ashes. Go ahead, Evelyn. Pinhead would like to know how detailed the Anna B. Meyer map is. 
Okay, uh, let's show that. Um, I'm gonna walk around it's there. It's incredible. <laughs> so this map is 48 by 36, I believe. And I can't see my screen right now, so Evelyn, uh, we're a little sideways and upside down at the moment. Tell me if it gets There up. you are. Yes. So it's like, it's fully, it's fully like mapped out topographical and um, uh, all the, the cities and towns and rivers and everything. Yes, uh, I don't know if we have one for Anna actually. I need to add one if we do not. Let me look. All right, I have no idea how that looked, but I tr tried. It, it looks lovely. Okay, great. All right, so coming back around. Uh, the PC, uh, I'll talk about Thank my you, PC Thank you, Steve, for linking that for us. I will need to make a command for that. Thank you, thank you. I'll talk about my PC specs in a moment, uh, but we have uh, now the different screens. So I look at three screens here, uh, if you can back up and see that. So the, the bottom screen here is what I generally run my slobs account on. So this is how I see mm -hmm. all of the chat, all the viewer interaction. I run all the tech from here. Then this middle screen uh, is where I put up my Zoom. So. You've got kind of the mirroring effect here, zoom within zoom within zoom. <laughs> and then up here. Zoom forever. Every time you see me show a, a picture. So for example, uh, let me come back here and let me kill this one for a sec. So when the players are playing and I say, uh, you see Winston, zoom him up here. I say, you see Winston. Uh, what they're seeing that on is this big screen up here. So the players in the room, if I'm playing a local game, they actually see it in the room. They see it up on that screen. So pop that up again. And that's one of the key things we do here because we have a we have one game which is all remote. Then we have another game which is all, <laughs> all local. And that's, that's challenging. Uh, the most challenging is the mix. So... That screen up there shows Winston. Uh, and that's what the players in the room would see. Then I've got some minis up here. But of course, most of them, there's some actress minis there. Then most of the minis are down here. Kill Brim and we riot. <laughs> um, so these are one inch by two inch um, containers. You can buy these on Amazon. They're cheap. Mm -hmm. um, and I just glued them up there with a spray glue. So I sprayed spray glue on my wall and I stuck these little containers up here. And so I've got most PCs here. Um, I've got some NPCs here. And the empty spots are because they're already on the table over here. <laughs> and then <laughs> I've got monsters uh, moving up from lizard people to orcs you want to see the paling scum the paling scum there he is and then I've got um, more these are custom painted orcs I did these are some of my paints all across there and then uh, standard uh, pre-painted orcs Bug bears um, are there normally. They're not right there right now. We'll see why uh, soon. Uh, some other cool stuff here, and then uh, lots of monsters. So I got tons of demons. Um, I've got liches and all kinds of nasty looking creatures. Sorry, it's not showing too well there. Let me pull that around. Lots of those guys. If you watched again, my uh, Lost Dog Carlos Lysing module on Friday of Greyhawk, uh, Virtual Greyhawk Con, I used these were rats. And I had many, many more were rats I didn't even use. And they are there. And then here we have undead. So all kinds of marching undead, standard skeletal undead, zombies. Uh, you've got 
spiders and goblins, skeletal. You've got your, uh, look at those guys. Are they not super cool? They have appeared in one of our sessions. Um, all kinds of animals. And then further NPCs. So a lot of the different types of characters and creatures you see on the stream. So that, whoops, whoops. And there's a real close up of some of the minis. So, <laughs> so you see that. Then I've got uh, all have, the big okay, guys so have down a here. Questions. Sorry, go ahead. I have a couple of questions now. Uh, Canadian Ancient Gamer wants to know if you use Lord of the Rings Games Workshop figures. I'm sorry, using one of the what? Lord of the Rings Games Workshop figures. So I don't have any of those, although I really like them. What I do have is, uh, so if you come back over here, this is part of the Lord of the Rings Games Workshop, I believe that's what it was called, set, uh, the Palisade. So you mm -hmm. saw this appear pretty prominently on our sessions a few weeks ago. <laughs> and I uh, bought these guys. They were a pain in the butt to put together. Well, for me, not for a bill. <laughs> Master Crafter or a lot of other folks, but for me they were tough, and that's what I used. Um, Pinhead would like to know which one is your favorite mini. Ooh, well, I mean, you really have to go with the Atris on here. Uh, I have to rip this cord out. You have to go with this Atris mini. It's probably my favorite of all time uh, that I've had. This guy is just wicked, but you've seen him a lot. So my favorite mini that I have painted, um, I don't know, I'm proud of this guy. This is my original PC. Um, I've played him for over 20 years. So this this is Mander Allen. Uh, if you can get him good, good light there. Nah, that's not good, Let me try over here. I painted him many years ago. He's got a nice base on him. Uh, he's a glorious paladin. But I also love uh, this orc uh, that I painted. He's got a, it's a Reaper mini. He's got a massive axe on him. Uh, and I took a lot of time to paint this guy. He's better than he looks there. Trust me. Uh, okay. Um, uh, the <laughs> music is a tad hot, John. Can we bring it down just a smidge? I'm hot? The music. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. That's better. Perfect. Thank um, you so much. Mystical Unicorn Painting would like to know how many giants you have. Giants? I, so how many do I have? I, I have one too few, Mystical Unicorn. I need another <laughs> one. Uh, but I got lots of stone giants over there. Um, these guys are important in our Rune Lords campaign. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple frost giants, uh, but not as cool as the one I've seen recently. Uh, I've got a hill giant over here. Um... So I see about seven or eight there. Hi, Rory. All right. Ali B would like to know, do you have any Ralpartha minis or paint? So, uh, not anymore. I did. I had Ralpartha minis. I had Grenadier minis. Um, I got rid of all of those like 20 years ago, and I still kick myself to this day. I know. I'm also ashamed. Uh, I painted... <laughs> Largely, back in the old days, and I think I mentioned this on a stream recently, who knows what paint I used uh, when I was a kid. Testers, model paint. Yep. Tell me why that's wrong, Rory. Why should you not use testers model paint? Yes, that's right, Ancient Gamer. You mean like the stuff for metal cars? Exactly, yep. or like plastic, they're, okay. they're oil-based, yeah. so they're super glossy. Yep. So they don't give you the right finish. Exactly, Tim. They're, they're oil-based, and that's what I started painting my minis with. Of course, now today, everything's wa water-based, and I've got mats and gloss. All right, so I do have um, push-open doors here. I want to get to tech before we close. Yep. I use these to store additional uh, minis and terrain area down here. Hello, Allie B. 
And then now we get to where my terrain tray sits. So I've got books up here. Many of them you saw over there as well. So the books kind of spread across. I've got some modules there. I have these containers uh, where I store bits of terrain and minis. Here's a larger one I have. Hang on. Dun, 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 dun. So, you know, everything from tombs to crypts, hay, rocks, all kinds of different things. I keep those in storage containers. Uh, and then I've got my Dwarven Forge stuff here. So here, here's all my basic uh, cavern, not caverns, um, dungeon tiles. I also have the old school dungeon tiles here. Uh, so these are the resin based. And those are the Dwarvenite. Up there, um, I've got some of the lava based. I've got traditional caverns, which look sparse now because I have caverns pre-built. So this is what you've heard me talk about a lot on the stream. I pre-build sets and I put them on these, let me pull one up here. I put them on these metal tricks so I can build a set on this and if the players go to see Brother Smith, or they go to the Welcome Wench, or they go wherever, I can build these and then pull them off these shelves. So I'll keep multiple sets on these shelves here, they're a little bit messy now, so that I'm ready wherever the players go. And if they go someplace I really didn't expect, we just go pure theater of mind. Sorry, go ahead, Evelyn. <laughs> yep. Um, oh, uh, uh, Phantom had a question, uh, where are the tiles from, or, I saw it a minute ago, hold on. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so yeah, I where, don't magnetize the, tiles the bases of the fi figures, pardon me, uh, but, uh, many of these Dwarven Forge, uh, tiles, they are magnetized. So they stick, um, and the minis aren't really a problem for me. Now, that doesn't apply, for example, if you look at the inn, th this inn, uh, none of these are uh, magnetized. They're a pain in the butt. They'll fall over so easy. So I'm al always struggling to keep these things upright <laughs> yeah. in the right spots. We've knocked over the inn walls a few times. So many, so many <laughs> times, yes. And we'll talk about what this is in a second, but any other questions on the stream? Um, uh, let's see, I saw that. Uh, someone asked if you had checked out the Dungeon Trays Kickstarter for keeping dungeon tiles. I have just game. started looking at those. I am interested, yes. Okay, and then... If anybody wants Moose to pop that in the chat, that's fine. <laughs> Moose2271 uh, asked, did you draw any maps on graph paper years ago, and do you still have them? Oh, oh, oh. so, um, did I draw any maps on graph paper? Absolutely, that's... That's how we did everything back in the day. I think I've talked on that on some of my old school LMA streams. By the way, thanks everybody, great chat. Um, but I don't have any of them still. Let me see if I can find an example, though I know I did one. But it was basically what you would do is you would follow the lines of the graph paper. You would have your corridors, you draw squares for rooms, and then you draw your traps. So a little circle you color in like a boulder and an arrow or an S for a secret door uh, and you would do all of that on this graph paper and that was that was how you did all your old school dungeons <laughs> probably making some of you dizzy with my camera here <laughs> um, let's see uh, Miss Skull asked if you could throw any monster at your players what would it be Ooh. probably Depending on how mean I am. <laughs> I like things like this chain golem. Uh, you know, things which are so difficult to hit with melee attacks. Um, I love those. Uh, but I think it's really tough to beat something like Baphomet. Um, you know, this is, this is a really wicked uh, mini to throw uh, at a player group, and it's probably likely to be certain death. Um, but then, of course, the big dragons are fun. Uh, what else? Um, We're currently fighting in Caligon, so he already threw that one at yeah, us. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, in Caligon. There is a blue box mug down here, so thank you for asking. 
Uh, there's a blue box mug right there. There's the trusty iPad. Okay, let me pick up on the tour. Let me speed this up a bit because I do want to get through this. Uh, even if you're bored, I promise you I would do this. So you've got spell effects here. Um, these are from WizKids. Easy to get. They're cool. So you've got your you know, crushing hand and your uh, ethereal servant and all kinds of neat things. I've got um, fire effects back here, all kinds of camping effects. I've got some tents from Bill the Master Crafter as well uh, over there, uh, which are really fun. And then coming down here, that iPad I use a lot uh, for gaming uh, content and dungeons. And then we get to the really fun stuff. Thank you for the follow, Robodan2k1. All right, so over here, um, I've already talked about, so a lot of these trees, and they're kind of sparse up there right now because many of them are already on the table. Guess where I get most of those? Hobby Lobby. Super cheap, easy to pick up. You go to Hobby Lobby if you've got those in your area and they've got all kinds of different colors of trees. So I've got my snow trees up there, my frost covered pines. I've got my autumn trees. Up here I have different kinds of normal verdant trees. I've got a standardized forest of trees here and all of my dungeon tiles. Then here, thank you Ancient Gamer. We appreciate that so much. Steve then, wants to know if you got the shipment from Martin yet. Not yet. That's probably Steve. Steve is probably asking that. Steve, so it's supposed to be here any day, uh, Steve. I don't have it yet, but I will soon. Oh my gosh, Lore Masters Arcanum with 50 viewers. That's crazy. Thank you so much. It's you Lori. You're bringing him in, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, then I've got my terrain up here. These are custom terrain modules from a group called Terranify. Uh, you can find them online. Uh, good stuff. And then the piece de resistance, the glory of my set is all of this miniature building authority, all of these houses, the castle walls, uh, these gorgeous keeps. Look at this stuff. It's absolutely incredible. And you can find him at miniature building authority. And I pull all this out when necessary. And you can actually see the moat house outside of Hamlet was all set up for the players last night, but they never got there. <laughs> uh, no, we just got Ashen really down wasted. Here, additional boxes uh, have additional uh, material. Down here, you've not seen this yet. I've got some of the Dwarven Forge Hellscape stuff. It's really cool. Um, I, I should have set it up, but if you haven't seen this, these panels are lighted. So there's actually a power spot here. You plug these in, they light up from underneath, and then you change the terrain with these tiles that sit on top. So they've got everything from lava, like this, <laughs> to the river sticks, I think is what they call this. And you just place this on top of the lighted tiles. So I'm kind of giving away some of the fun because it's going to happen on a stream at some point soon. But yeah, that's all that stuff. All right, let me pause there. Old <laughs> character books. These are books from years and years ago. Lots of old characters. Lots of characters up there as well. I keep all the old characters. I'm not quite as organized as Jay is, uh, but pretty cool stuff. Other questions? Um, I'm not seeing any other ones. Okay, let's then, let me kill this cam. Any other, anything else anyone wants to see in the room? Oh, the hue lighting. So I oh, was yeah. going to show this. Awesome. You've seen me do it on stream, but look at these lights. So when I say go night, everything changes to night. When I say the room is on fire, it all changes to fire. Um, when I want to go to a bit dimmer room, it knocks one light out. Uh, and then I can do I can do green, I can do blue, and they're all with one touch. And I'll show you how I do that with one touch in a second. But these are all hue lights, and they're not that expensive. They're like thirty bucks a light, I think. Um, and they they last forever. They're LED based, so they don't burn out. All right, I'm gonna go to tech. 
to close. Any other questions up before I do? Mm -mm. All right. Oh, actually, Steve wants to know what happens when you say disco, disco. <laughs> if I say, oh, actually, okay. Well, no, okay. You, okay, you have your smart, lightning? Smart. Let's go, smart guy. All right, so <laughs> I actually have something. Uh, it's an app you have to buy. It's a third party app. It's like two bucks. And I believe it's called Thor. Let me find it here. Thor, Thor Light. And da 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 da. We're welcoming other questions as well. Oh, Canadian Ancient Gamer would like to know what your preferred paint for painting your minis is. Um, so in general, I use a lot of the War Paint series, but most of them are Citadel paints. And, and my favorite wash is Agrax Earthshade. Uh, that is such a universal wash. I love working with that. Those Citadel paints are awesome. All right, so here you go, Rory. Um, we were talking about, you know, doing um, strobes and disco. So it, you've seen me do this occasionally when we've had a storm, right? Yeah. And when I do that, here, I'll just do something else. I'll do uh, party and let's do strobe color. And should kick off. I've got my Wi-Fi turned off. There we go. Yep. Hold on, let me let me put this cam back on so you can see it. So yes, you can do parties and strobes. I use these for lightning storms mm -hmm. in the room. It's really cool in the room. Yeah. Cooler than it seems on the stream. It's really fun in the room. It's really cool in the room. <laughs> Right, and let me kill that. Especially the first time, like it happened when we were playing, and I did not expect it at all. It was really cool. The unexpected <laughs> yes, is the key. Yes, just disco party. <laughs> all right, so closing tech, and I'll probably jump into this more in another stream uh, with additional detail. But uh, the technology is—did that just come in? No. Oh. No. Okay, the technology is um, really cool. Uh, we've got a basic PC here. Um, it's like a cy cyber power PC. The only thing I did was I upgraded my RAM tremendously. So let me show you here. I think I saved a screenshot of that I can share. Uh, and let me zoom that in. So I'm running in this room a cyber power PC, nothing special, 3.4 gigahertz. Uh, Ryzen 5 AMD processor, but I've upgraded to 24 gigs of RAM. And I've upgraded that RAM because I run so many different applications. So I got slobs, snaz, all the pictures, the audio, sirenscape, which I'll show you in a second, and you need RAM to run that. Then uh, beyond that, uh, I mentioned sirenscape. If you've not seen that, hold on. Pull that guy up, and where is it? Uh, while you're pulling that up, uh -huh. uh, Pat wanted to know what speakers you use. My speakers are not special. They're just some basic Logitech speakers, these guys. Yep. Um, but they're enough to fill the, the room, and I've got a sub that goes with this set. So this is like a $100 set of speakers uh, with a sub. Uh, I use this a lot. You've heard me talk about it. Let me zoom in on this. Uh, Adrian von Ziegler, this is all free. So this is free use. Uh, you got two hours of Celtic music and everything he has is free use. So you can use this audio stuff and you don't ever get it cut off uh, by YouTube, mm. uh, which is really nice. Then, um, go ahead. Uh, Phantom would like to know what application you're using for audio processing, voice meter, something else? Yeah, so probably not the right night to ask that since I'm struggling with it now. <laughs> but yes, I use um, not just an app, I, I use a piece of hardware. So let me show you what I've got here. I'll pull this back up. Uh, before I get to that, one thing I want to mention is if you've not used these, you need one. This is the Elegato Stream Deck. Uh, so you can see with this Stream Deck, when I change, you see me look down occasionally. When I change lighting and I say go to night mode, it's a touch of a button. Oh, when I say, and I don't have my um, my Sirenscape app launched right now, but I, if I want to play battle music 
and then you got folders here so I can click whoops pull it pulled off here one second I can click down to a folder so like let's see if you can see this folder here says sound effects now I have a whole other group of sound effects so everything from night mode to doors creaking and closing it's not looking very good there on the screen and this all connects with Sirenscape online because uh, they have a beta web player so when I touch one of these buttons it connects to the beta player for Sirenscape and kicks off the sound you've heard me talk about this before if you watch any LMAs I have a stop button right here and that's the key because Sirenscape does not let you uh, use any command to stop easily so I have a batch script uh, that was written for me by one of my friends who is way more techie than me and uh, it does all of that stopping for me so coming back here I'll show you what that looks like the stream deck so you can see it a little bit better that's the stream deck uh, bump, hold on. make sure that's up on that yep and that out of the way do, 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 do. That there all right so the stream deck there uh, you can see this is how you program things so if I want to say for example uh, if I want to kick off a sound I can click those buttons on my stream deck uh, but you see all my views here when I say oops wrong button it's normally because I hit one of these regular blue box buttons instead of one of these Greyhawk Awakening buttons <laughs> or I hit one of the Greyhawk Awakening buttons instead of one of the blue box buttons and then all my sounds are in the middle I did have a neck jockey write some scripts that's exactly right and so I run all of that then when you go into those subfolders you can see all the spells and the sounds I can kick off uh, and it makes it just so much easier because when I'm playing uh, I don't want to be occupied going through an application bogging the game down uh, boring my players while I hunt for something I want everything to feel very organic and quick to them when we're playing so that's how I do that all right so now uh, what do I use for audio um, it's more complicated than it needs to be and it's probably much more complicated than you need um, because for a while because of COVID I was doing the hardest thing I've ever done which was a combination of in-room audio and remote audio so I have this mic mixer here uh, I have eight wireless mics now that's actually really helpful and I'll show you that it's, it's really cheap too it's like 200 and something bucks on Amazon and I have this beautiful Behringer X18 and that's much more complex you don't need that um, unless you're actually doing both in in room stream and uh, remote stream uh, so that's what I use for audio but because I do all kinds of different streams back around all right and any other questions not that I've seen all right Rory um, let me come back to you because you've been a, a good sport through all of the gimbal drama um, Tell us more about your podcast before we close off and uh, what you have going on with uh, Varsavir with two DMs. Uh, it's kind of been on a, on a hold a bit. Um, Varsavir has been renamed to Gimbal's Adventuring Academy. Oh, okay. Um, and just to kind of unify the names, bring it across social media platforms. Um, I'm starting to get back in. The server's still been going. People have been amazing, still, still RPing inside the server. So, um, probably start kicking off a couple one shots here and there. So, lesson learned: don't dive too deep when you can't swim. Uh, so I got a bit burned on on running multiple one shots over and over and over. Uh, nice thing is the foundation is there now, so I'm starting to kick it back up and get get it going again. So I'd still like to explore the idea of getting the blue box uh, streams up on your podcast as well. I know you reached out to me about that. Mm -hmm. I think that would be fun to do. Um, and uh, for any podcast fans out there, what what do you? I'll talk about that uh, Canadian Ancient Gamer. Great question. 
uh, what do you use for your podcast in terms of tech? Rory? Oh, for me? Yeah. Uh, free free plat- flat, bleh, platforms. Uh, use SoundCloud. SoundCloud up uh, connects into whether it be Spotify or iTunes or what other, whatever other platform uh, pretty easily. And then I use Audacity for any kind of uh, editing. Gotcha. So a couple questions. Um, so thank you, yes, Machik. I, Sirenscape, it is well worth the money. It is a great application. Mm-hmm. Uh, the web player is you know, super easy to connect with, but if you want to use the local application, that's good too. I've used it for my local games. Like You don't have to be streaming to use Sirenscape. I've used it with my family. You know, when I sit down here and I've got a game, I play with my kids that's not even streamed. You know, it's just all my kids and they've been playing those characters uh, for like eight years now. And uh, I use Sirenscape in the room uh, for that stream. So it's a great app. So fog machines, yes, you do have to pay. Sirenscape's like, there's different uh, different there's rates. A, there's a free version that's very, very basic right. and it has some stuff in it. But if you want the level of like everything, then there is a cost behind that. That's right. Well said. Uh, and then Ancient Gamer. I don't have a fog machine, but man, I've thought about it. I see a lot of people using them. Now, my only hesitancy, again, is I don't want to bog down. I want my terrain to flow with my game. And I feel like, in general, a fog machine would be a bit of, you know, almost too much production quality, uh, too much effort. (laughs) But uh, there have been times uh, I wish I would have had one. So, yeah, don't be surprised if you see a fog machine show up here in limited use here at Blue Box. All right. SoundCloud, yes. I know, I'm in a 12 by 12 room. (laughs) The the fog would fill it quickly. Really fast, (laughs) really fast. You would have to turn it on for like half a second and then it would just be It's not a J room. You know, it's not this massive underground basement with an eight by eight table. My table is six six by four, six by five. Uh, I make do with what I have. An homage to Te- Cheech and Chong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have fire alarms down here, Tim. I'd be safe. Could you use that for the, the Darkweed episode of Rune Lords? Oh, the Darkweed <laughs> episode. That would have been so perfect. <laughs> when Kate said everything. Why did I think fire? of that? Yes. Um, <laughs> thank you, uh, Phantom. I've definitely squeezed everything I can in, into the space. And I think for the players that have played uh, locally, I mean, Evelyn, I'm going to put you on the spot. Go for it. And I give you free license to tell me that I am smoking like Cheech and Chong uh, if I'm <laughs> wrong. But when you walk in this room, I feel like it carries an ambience. And there's a there's a sense of you're in the middle of a sort of old school tavern. What do you mm-hmm. feel like when you're playing in this room? And if you say yeah. I feel creepy and you're way too close to me, John, that's fine too. <laughs> but like, what do you actually think? <laughs> Sorry. Um... No, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I remember actually going to, into the gaming space the very first time because, you know, it was, gosh, 2017, a million years ago, it feels like right about now. Um, but, like, it was really cool because, like, we would go down and then there's a secret door that you have to go into to get to the game room. So it added this whole, like, level of, ooh, what's behind the door? <laughs> and um, and then, you know, it, it feels kind of like a tavern in there. And, and, you know, with the groups we have, like, our biggest group really is our um, Lord of the Rings group. And, like, it's still, you know, we're comfortably spaced in there and especially with the uh the table the the lifted table now we have much more table space than we used to <laughs> trying to like fit character sheets oh and i didn't all even go to my other table and... options right yes yeah so you know john's lovely wife uh who plays kate in our sunday campaign she made the the lazy susan uh map 
the round lazy stew map thing we use for our local um games and it has made it where we you know i have room for my tablet now and my whole my dcg dice tray um so that you know and all my million dice that i have um without taking up space that other players need as well so it's it's really awesome and it utilizes the space, you know, that that we have. But it's it's cozy and it helps us get into the mood of the game. I feel like when we're we're there. All right, so I got a fifty for you later. And um, <laughs> so like this this so this battle map. This is a six by four battle map. Uh, Jay Lord Gasumba actually told me about this map. I got this on uh, this battle map. Yeah, I got this on Amazon. It's gorgeous. Uh, but this all comes off, and that's a table extension. So that piece there comes off. When I have people in my room. I set up chairs around the table, and mm -hmm. that's when I use that Lazy Susan. So I have a piece that comes in here, it sits right here, it plugs into a power outlet, it sits about, uh, about a foot off the table, and it rotates, uh, and I've got interchangeable uh, terrain sides on it. So the question from Penhead, I think, was, how many people can I fit in the room? I think five is comfortable plus me, so six but I've played with six plus me seven. So I've gotten seven peop people down here and it's worked well. Yeah, our uh, Lord of the Rings campaign, we've had six. Yeah, we had seven for, yeah. for us in the Lord yep. of the Rings six, campaign. Six and that, that almost feels... Yeah, so seven feels a little tight. A little tight. But that's but also because I got all this tech down here and all the <laughs> servers and all the equipment and whatnot. Uh, oh, and I didn't mention the most important part of the game room. Uh, the crit table the binder. The Tim crit <laughs> tables in all of their glory. And I've got my old school uh, Middle Earth crit tables. I've got the Tim crit tables divided uh, in a folder here with tabs and all kinds of ways. Green Loon Turn, you do need these crit tables. Reach out to Tim. He's on the stream or reach out to me. Whisper me. Uh, um, if you don't have these tables, you need them. That monkey has a question. He wants to know how many cameras do you end up using? Seems like a bunch. Yes, okay, so great question. So I have um, this camera, so one, the one I'm holding. That camera that you're looking at me with, that's two. I have um, that ca camera, uh, that's a DSLR, that's camera three. And then I have my battle cam, which is camera four. So I'm using four cams, three of them are 4K. Only the battle cam is 1080p. Uh, the rest of these guys are 4K. The DSLR is 4K. I use an Elegato um, capture card. So if you want to use or know anything about that, you can reach out to me. I can help you with that. I use an Elegato capture card. And then that's it. Those four cams. Yep. Asher, you play eight players, GM Ooh. plus hangers on and dogs. That sounds like a good game. Uh, <laughs> I would love to play in that. And you create a move for oh, replace Gregorian. I, I do Gregorian chants as well. Uh, I don't know that I've done spring rain scented incense. Uh, I, I might give that a shot. Uh, but <laughs> you, you can't go wrong with a good Gregorian chant. Um, all right. So before we shut off, we're going to raid Jay. Uh, anybody have any other questions? All right. So join us on Sunday, 1.30 Central. That's our Rune Lords campaign, fast growing. Uh, then join us uh, next Tuesday at five o'clock for Greyhawk Awakening and see the fate of Gimbal, um, our beloved gnome uh, who has been missing the stream terribly. And so Gimbal, I'm gonna give you the last word before we raid Jay. Uh... Be nice. You never know what's going to happen if you're mean to someone. Very true. Very true. Alia doesn't know what she has coming. And Tim, I definitely need a good weapon in here for decoration. So yes, uh, by <laughs> all means, my friend. And with that said, we're going to set up to Ray J. And you can watch me do this. I've done this once or twice before. So here's how you raid. You go on to your Twitch channel. Oh, that's YouTube. That's not what we want. Uh, bah, 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 bah. We go Twitch, and then you go to 
See Slate panel. No, Creator Dashboard, wrong one. Two. Go creator Dashboard. And then you click Raid. And when you raid, you see your options. And there is Lord Gazumba. I already has 70 viewers. Let's bring him 38 more. Thank you, everybody. By the way, Thank if you, you didn't guys. follow us yet, give us a follow. Um, yeah. We appreciate all the support tonight. Great, great chat, great stream. Um, probably, again, our best LMA uh, you know, viewership that we've ever had. Mm -hmm. So we're super grateful. And give us a follow. And we're kicking off the raid for Jay. If you have any questions on the tech, um, DM me or uh, check Come us out in our on Discord. Discord. Uh, in the, we have a Lore Masters account, uh, Arcanum chat channel that you could ask those questions in as well. Yeah. So I just dropped the Discord creds Perfect. for anybody. Yeah, so go, go in that Discord. There's an LMA area there. You can pop in. You can mm -hmm. ask me anything. Um, why do I screw up so much? Uh, how do I stumble into walls all the time? Uh, or something about the tech or the audio or the video, whatever you'd like to know, uh, jump in there and let me know. I will help you in any way I can. Just not you, Rory. Uh... <laughs> Ouch. Oh, why do you hate Winston? <laughs> oh, I love Winston. So if you don't know what that means, Winston's life hangs in the balance and I have gotten hate mail. I had an anthrax package in my mailbox today. Um, it is just, it is incredible. Uh, the viewer and player anger over any endangerment of the beloved Winston. I'm so just we'll saying. See what happens then. Tuesday. Lilith, Lilith has your address now to send you a t-shirt. I don't know what that means. I'm just saying. I know. I know. All right. So, rating J, Lord Gazumba. He is awesome. Check him out. And we rated.